relationship and you can solve for B because you A you already solve. So B will be equal to this. In fact, you can see very clearly after you solve for A and B, if you add these two terms together, you will see that 0 0.618 plus 0 0.382 is exactly equal to 1. And therefore, when you add A plus B, the answer will be XU minus XL, which is exactly true from this picture right there. Okay, the next thing I have to let you know is where do we get this number 0 0.618? Where does it come from? Well, it comes from the ratio that we said earlier. Let's say from this we can write the expressions like that. In other words, you just turn upside down. Instead of uh, B over A, which is right here, B over A, you turn it upside down, become A over B. And the same thing for this ratio, instead of A on the top, now you put A's in the bottom. Okay, and then after that you will see A divided by A is 1. That is 1. And then this B over A, it is still in here. Now, suppose you let capital R to be defined as the ratio B over A, like the capital R. So using that new notation, A over B, this ratio, will become 1 over R. This value 1 is still here, and B over A ratio is become R. So now you can see clearly from this equation right here, if you multiply both sides by R, you will get a quadratic equation coming out. And based on that quadratic equation, you solve for the root. One of the root will be square root 5 minus 1 over 2, which is the same thing as 0 0.618. So, I already explained to you how do I get this number 0 0.618 which is the ratio of B over A. The next thing I will try to explain to you will be why if we select that number 0 0.618 it will do some good thing for you. But before do that let's take a look at the second picture over there. As you can see from the first picture this is the location x1 that we want to select or we want to insert. So basically to select the interior point x1, it should be at the distance a from the lower point and at a distance b from the upper bound. On the second picture on your right, if we want to select the location of the interior point x2, we do a similar thing. We select x2 at the location distance a with respect to the upper bound just like in the earlier case to select x1 you select at the distance a with respect to the lower bound now from the previous picture when you select x1 you know this distance should be a and that distance should be b based on the picture on your left. Now to select the location x2, this distance we say we want it to be a, and because if this is a, and that distance is b, therefore the middle distance must be a minus b. So here you can see from the second uh, picture here, this is the x lower bound, this is the x upper bound and this is the first in inserted point x1 this is the second inserted point x2 and both of these distance are equal to each other equal to b the middle distance is a minus b so 
if you add this distance b with this distance b with the middle distance, you will see it turn out to be a plus b, which is supposed to be the length of the interval. And notice that distance b, same thing is here, is given by that formula, 0 0.382 times x upper bound subtract x lower bound. That formula, by the way, I already proved to you before, right there. And then the distance A is given by that formula. And again, that formula is already proved to you right here. So, why we select x1 and x2 according to that way, it will do some good thing for you. It will become obvious when we go to the next slide, maybe some example. Okay, suppose we look at the one example. The horizontal axis represents theta. Instead of x, we call theta now. The vertical axis, we call it f of theta instead of f of x. And the function that we want to find out the maximum or the optimum point is given as 4 sine theta times 1 plus cos theta. That function, you can plot it and it will look something like this on the screen. Now, obviously, just by observation, you will see that the optimum or the maximum point of that function will be around here, right there. And actually, you can figure out the location of that point very easily just by simple calculus. Because from the given function, you can rewrite that as this. Okay? The reason is because psi of theta times cosine of theta is considered the same thing as one half of psi of two theta. So that's why you can get the second equation. Okay, after you get the second equation, the next thing we want to do, we say, what is the derivative of f with respect to theta? And well, that's easy. The derivative is given right here. The derivative of psi is cos, the derivative of cos is psi. So, and if you set the derivative equal to zero, that is the necessary requirement to get the maximum or the minimum of the function. So, you set the derivative to zero. What you have is an equation look like this. Now, obviously, from that equation, if you let cos theta, give it a new name, call it x, for example, then cos square of theta will be something like x square. Well, that is just a simple quadratic equation you can solve for x. And after you solve for x, you can solve for theta. And the answer, theta optimum, is pi over 3. And that is right there. Now, however, theta equal to pi over 3, that is the optimum location when you do the exact analytical solution. How can we do this? by using the golden section that I presented to you before. Okay, if you remember, since the optimum is here, so the user, the first thing requirement is to come up with the x lower bound and the, the lower bound and the upper bound. So, for example, suppose we say the lower bound is equal to zero, right there. And the upper bound is equal to, right there, theta equal to pi over two. So, this is the lower bound value and the function right here corresponding to pi over 2. This is the upper bound of the function. Now, suppose according to the previous slides, according to the previous slide, if you remember, in the previous slides, if you look on the previous slide, you can see in order to figure out the location, in order to figure out the location x1, 
that should be equal to x lower bound plus a or it should be equal to x upper bound subtract b okay and so based on that from this example we can figure out the location x1 which is right there this is x1 right there that location is given by the formula I developed for you earlier. Similarly, you can find out the location x2, which is right here, using the formula that we developed in a previous slide. So now let's see what happened. Beside the lower bound, which is here, and the upper bound, which is here, now we have two more interior points, x1 and x2, and the function value is here and there. So now you take a look at the four green point, which I call it, for example, point A, point B, point C, and point D. And look at the pattern. The function at A compared to the function B, FB is bigger. And then, FC is bigger than FB. So, so far, there's no change in the pattern. However, the next point, FD, is smaller than FC. So, there's a change in the pattern. That telling me right there that this should be the new upper bound. And if you go back two point before that, point C, point B, this should be the new lower bound. So in other words, this should be the new interval in the next iteration. As you can see, that new interval in the next iteration is shorter than the first interval initially that you have right there. Okay? Now, so this point right here should be considered as the new lower bound. I call up alpha L with the bar. This should be the new upper bound, alpha U bar. Notice the new upper bound is the same thing as the old upper bound. However, the new lower bound is different from the old lower bound. Okay. So now, since we have the new lower bound and the new upper bound is here, again, we want to insert two more points. However, the good news is this. Remember point C? That point C is here. It turned out that when you insert two more points, one of the points is already have it based on the previous iteration. So that means this point C will be one of those two points that I told you earlier, x1 and x2. One of them is point C. So you just have to find a, another location. So that is the advantage of the golden section. Instead of finding two new interior points for each new interval, you only have to find only one new interior point for each interval. Okay. So that is a general idea. Again, let me show you... Uh